In what may be one of the most funny and terrifying stories I've ever seen, Google arrested its own employees who at work staged a sit-in in their boss's office demanding divestment from Israel. You reap what you sow, Google. You reap what you sow. You hire these people and they protest their own company at work. I have to wonder they're fired. But knowing Google, they'll probably give them some kind of commendation. They'll get a, 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 a badge of approval within the company. Why? Company culture. Now, the calling of the police on their own employees is certainly hilarious. But let's uh, let's read the story from National Review. Police arrest Google employees who staged anti-Israel office protests. Police arrested several Google employees who staged sit-in protests on Tuesday to oppose the company's ties to Israel. Protesters occupied offices in New York, California, and Washington to demand the company cancel Project Nimbus, a $1.2 billion contract with Israel. The cloud seeding computer project is shared by Amazon. Google employees started an internal no tech for apartheid group with over 200 members, which has been active since October to protest this venture, uh, the venture. Employees also staged a die in outside of a Google building in San Francisco in December. Tuesday's California sit in lasted hours and was held in the office of Google Cloud CEO Thomas Curian. Protesters wore T-shirts that read Googler against genocide and plastered a poster outside Curian's office that said drop Nimbus. A man confronted the protesters, notified them that they had been placed on administrative leave, then asked them to leave voluntarily before calling law enforcement. Police then detained the demonstrators and charged them with criminal trespassing, according to a local Fox affiliate. This is insane. How do you hire these people? Here's the video. We have video, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, Here we go. A bit ago, wanted to ask you, you know, yeah. to cooperate. You know, we've been placed on admin leave. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, you know, we'd like to see if we can do this voluntarily, you know. So it's, nah, it's kind of hard to hear. We don't really care. He's saying, I need you to leave. Yeah. They're refusing to leave. And yeah. then I think in this video, we actually have the uh, the police come in. Absolutely right, amazing. Leave, Watch guys. this. Leave? Yes. Yeah. Okay. You first end up. <laughs> I wonder how much Google really cares, though. I suppose when the boss calls the cops on you. Wow. So they're all put on leave. Physically impeding other employees work and preventing them from accessing our facilities is a clear violation of our policies, and we will investigate and take action. Google spokeswoman Bailey Tom Thompson said these employees were put on administrative leave and their access to our systems was cut. After refusing multiple requests to leave the premises, law enforcement was engaged to remove them to ensure office safety. An employee with a history of anti-Israel sentiment in the workplace participated in Tuesday's protest and accused Google of creating a culture of fear and retaliation against workers in general. Rather than, you know, consider the demands that we've been raising for years now and listening to workers and considering the things we've been raising, Thomas Curie and Google execs basically chose to arrest workers for speaking out against the use of our technology to power the first AI powered genocide. Google software engineer Mohammed Katami said, we were willing to get arrested for that because at this point, we aren't willing to be lied to by our higher ups anymore. We aren't willing to be disrespected by our higher ups anymore. And we wanted to take that to the offices and make sure it was understood by them. We want workers to feel like we have the power to choose where our technology is going and who we're contributing to, he added. Conservatives, take heed. Google employees are willing to get fired and arrested for protesting in their own companies. And what do I hear from the right? I can't, I have kids. Well, I will say to an extent, fair point, but I will also add, you mean to tell me that these far leftists who have nothing to fight for and nothing to lose are, wor are, are doing the fighting for destruction? It's kind of crazy because I, I view it like this, right? A far left communist revolution is happening all around you. They are killing people. And uh, it may be a bit hyperbolic, but, you know, Aaron Danielson, for instance, uh, there, there were people who have been shot and killed in many instances. And I would also uh, extend this to, well, there have been direct confrontations like Aaron Danielson, which is a direct killing. You have the rampant crime as a result of their policies, which is resulting in people dying in New York, getting pushed in front of trains and their legs severed off. One lady was. Wow. Crazy story. This is what's fascinating to me. 
You'd think if you were in your home with your children who were eating their bowl of porridge and far leftists were coming to take over and enforce communist rule, which would see your children's die, your children would die, which would see your children die, that this father would say, I will do everything in my power to fight back against the communists who want to harm my family. I suppose it's fair that many people, when facing the barrel of authoritarianism, just get on their knees and say, thank you, master. That's what we get from a lot of people. I get it. It's just seemingly paradoxical. The left has nothing. Many of these people do not have children. Many of them do, but many of them don't. And it's the people who have kids who tend not to want to resist when you are the one who actually has to. Isn't that weird? And then they go, Tim, you don't even have any kids. What, what do you know? Um, logic and math. If you have children and you accept communist dictatorship, your children will be killed. They will live in pods or they will eat bugs. Now, by all means, many of you may be saying, I would rather my child be alive, but locked in a pod and eating bugs. OK, I guess I'm not you. Suppose a lot of people would rather, given the choice between their child dying, they would choose to have their child sterilized. And that's what we see from a lot of these these liberal leftist uh, parents where they're like the doctor goes to them and say, you can have a dead child or a trans child. And they say, oh, no, oh, heavens me. The reality is that's a false choice for many of these conservatives. You can have a free future with risks. Or you can have your kids living in a pot and eating the bugs and being servants and slaves. It's kind of wild. We're setting up the new studio and we had some creepos drive onto the property. Nobody knew who they were. And we have we have pretty heavy security and stuff, so we're not super worried about it. But of course, there are some complaints. People are upset. They're like, we got to figure this out because it's a big property. And if we're doing events and stuff and we have these buildings, people, we need security. And I'm like, no, of course, of course, well, we have it. But we got to take it more seriously with some physical barriers and things like this. And I said, welcome to freedom. New York, you have no freedom. Criminals will push you in front of the trains and they'll say, well, you know, just another day in New York. In West Virginia, if somebody wants to drive onto our property into the heart to do us harm, we're strapped. And that's freedom. You think living in New York where you have no freedom to defend yourself, you think you'd be better off? Well, there's police. They'll protect you. No, they won't. The reality is in a place like New York, not only do you have no freedom, you also have no security. The people who would give up their security, or I should say give up their freedom expecting security, you will, you will get neither. You will lose both. I believe that's what uh, Benjamin Franklin said. Maybe it's apocryphal, but he said, those who would give up a little bit of uh, freedom for some temporary security deserve neither and will lose both. But it's true. New York being the best example. In New York, they say, what do you need a gun for? Just call the cops. What happens now? Criminals with guns are killing people, pushing them in front of trains, among other things, and the cops can't do anything about it. So you have lost your freedom to defend yourself. You have lost your right to defend yourself. And now you are facing the brunt of tyranny. The police will arrest you like Daniel Penny if you defend yourself. Then you have West Virginia, where uh, you're out in the middle of nowhere for the most part. And there are bad people because they know there's no witnesses. They can come on your property. What are you going to do about it? But hey, guess what? I got guns. And a lot of them. And you ain't going to walk anywhere near me, my friends, or my family to do us harm. We won't let that happen. We have security, too. They take care of it for the most part. But we, we, we retain those rights. Why? Because when the question comes up and says, give up your freedom and we will give you security, we know that's an impossible trade. It can't happen. There is no such thing as real security. So we must maintain our freedom. Why? In the face of of these crimes against us, we have to have the freedom to live our lives and defend ourselves. But freedom comes with risk. I give you the story of Mr. Mutton Chops. He was a rooster, a young rooster that we had. We uh, Chicken City got a little overpopulated. So we sent a bunch of the roosters out into the outskirts in this caged off, uh, fenced off little area. It's about a four foot tall little fence. One rooster refused to be caged. We called him Mr. Mutton Chops because he had mutton chops. And he would jump up and jump out every day. Well, outside of the cage, there was beautiful, delicious grass and flowers and things he would eat. And he liked to walk around and go where he wanted to go. 
I respect it. So when we culled and ate the roosters, he got to live. But we knew his time was short. But I respect it. This rooster chose freedom over security. Perhaps he was too stupid. We would then every day walk over, open up the, the, the little fence and let him back in. And then sure enough, when he decided to, he'd jump right on back out. He's dead now. We believe it was a fox that got him. But that's that's reality. And it's a question of this. The roosters that are still in their cage, it's muddy because they tore it to shreds. They're safe and alive. Those roosters can leave if they want to. Some of the chickens jump up on top of the houses. They could jump out if they want to. One time one chicken did, died. You choose. I understand that going out into the fray is dangerous, and I accept that. And maybe a fox will get me. So be it. It's my choice. You take a look at what's going on in the world and you have people who tell you. You must be you must give up your rights to keep and bear arms. You must give up your rights to defend yourself. And then we'll give you security. And what happens? It doesn't work. So what do we see now and how do I relate all this? The good men and women who believe in the United States who say, I will not speak up. I will not protest because I have kids. OK, your kids will live in the pod and eat the bugs. If you're OK with that, then we got no issues. There you go. Maybe you're offended by the idea that your children would be subjected to slavery and forced to eat bugs off the ground in front of communists. Maybe the idea of these communists in these offices smirking and sipping on wine while your children lick their feet pisses you off. Maybe. But my point is this. The left is willing to get fired from their job and arrested from the inside of their own offices. And for what? Most of them don't even have kids. I shouldn't say most, but many of them don't. And then you with children, with something you must fight to preserve, this great nation would say, I can't stand up for my rights. Okay. I'm not going to tell you to live your life. I'll just tell you, do the math. The math is simple. These same communists at Google will have your children licking their feet while they laugh. Is that the future you want for your kids? Okay. Well, if it's not, you need to speak up, vote locally, help uh, be active in your community. I saw a great post and they said the reason why this is happening is that the factions have divided into two principal uh, groups, those who want to impose a worldview and those who want to be left alone. And the end result of these worldviews is obvious. Those who will impose will never stop. And those who want to be left alone don't organize. You choose. It's up to you. I fear what happens in November if Trump doesn't win. I really do. I suppose we'll see. Next segment's coming up at 8 p.m. over at youtube.com slash timcastirl. Thanks for hanging out. We'll see you all then.